How are you doing? Welcome to Lars Live episode number 14. My name is Lars Christensen and um, this is where I answer some of my emails, hopefully adding some value to your Fusion 360 experience. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I would truly appreciate if you would do that. And as always, thumbs up if you like this, thumbs down if you don't. I have um, a good list of, uh, we're going to get all over the place uh, in today's uh, series here. So it uh, should be good. Let's just, let's just get going here. Uh, first one is from Mark. Uh, hi, Lars. Love your videos. Thank you so much, Mark. Um, I am designing some items that I want to put a logo on. Uh, and I've created a logo object that I can import into other design files. I create the logo by importing a JPEG and tracing it and then extruding it so I have a 3D logo object. All right. So ultimately, I want to print something on the 3D printer um, and then I want to be able to extrude this logo up uh, two to three millimeters. Um, now, the thing is, how do I save time by importing that logo into other files? Um, Let's look at it. Let's look at it, Mark. <laughs> this should be a, uh, this is one of those that if you already knew this, you're going to be like, oh yeah, I already knew this. But if you didn't, you're going to be like, whoa, wait a second. So let's uh, let's make uh, a logo. And uh, Mark had um, had imported a JPEG and do some tracing. We're actually going to do that later in, uh, in this uh, Sunday edition anyways. So I'm just going to make a sketch line here. Let's do an offset of that. Uh, let's do that 10 millimeters and then let's put some text in it. So I'm just going to make, make kind of like my own here. Um, and then we'll go ahead and place that somewhere, something like this. So let's say that maybe I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Oops. Um, let's say that this was the logo that we, we had created um in that in that sketch so the idea is that we have this logo we want to be able to extrude this um to different surfaces for different models later down later down the road um so what i would do is i would do this sketch that you have used mark i would save this so i would go in here and i would save it as uh mark um logo sketch so you see that I haven't extruded anything out. I just left it as a sketch. Now, uh, two weeks goes by and uh, we are now uh, modeling something up. Let's just do a, uh, a rectangle here. Let's make it 300 by 400 maybe. I don't know. Uh, so now we have like this surface. We have modeled up. It could be all kinds of things. Probably, um, probably linear or a flat, sorry, surface. Now... I'll go back to uh, to the file that we had. I would open it up in its own window here. I would go in and edit that sketch. And then I would just highlight it all and do a control C for copy. Go to our new part, open a sketch, and then just do a control V. And uh, that will show up. Now you might have to spin that around. But now this is brought in as a uh, as a sketch uh, that you could move wherever you want on that uh, surface. Hit OK and uh, Q for press pull, and you can now do um, your two to three millimeter extrusion that you want. So literally, what we have is we have created um, this sketch, here, and then we're done. We just say finish sketch. Um, what we have created here is kind of a template. And that could just be a file sitting over there being its own. And like I said, all you do is right click, go and say edit sketch. You just window it whole thing, do a control C, and then you can go in and uh, open it, the, the face you want to have it on a control V, and then it will be, uh, be pasted right there as a sketch entity. So that's one way that you can copy, um, you can copy that. What do you think, Mark? I think that was a uh, pretty neat trick. If you, like I said, if you already knew this, you're gonna be like, I knew this, but uh, that's the trick that I would use 
uh, for that. So thumbs up if you like that, Mark. Thumbs down if you don't. Leave a comment. Hope that was useful. All right, let's um, let's move on here. Next one is um, is from Ryan, um, and the the email is. By the way, you can always send me an email, lars.christensen at autodesk.com. It's all down in the description of the video. Um, the title of this email was Crazy Straw. <laughs> uh, hi, Lars. Love your show. Very happy about that, Ryan. I would like to know how to make a crazy straw. And I actually had to, um, I actually had to look that up um, because, I don't know. I got kids, as you probably have known what a crazy straw is. But if you search crazy straw, you can kind of see those on the images all wacky uh like that there who would have known uh <laughs> um i was thinking sculpting it however uh is there a way to hollow it out or would i have to design it like the bike frame you recently did i don't want to do the bike frame we did recently ryan i'm going to show you two ways to do this you could definitely use uh the sculpt workspace we'll do that first but i would probably use the standard modeling environment i think depending on what kind of crazy straw you want to make let's take a look at it quick here um that should be a good little one so let's go into fusion there was our logos let's move on um so if we're going to do sculpt we'll click create form in a new file and you have these predefined shapes we do have a cylinder so i'm just going to sketch a circle i don't know how big a really a straw is to be honest uh, maybe six millimeters in diameter um, and then you kind of get that shape here now there's many different ways we could do this and and you maybe wanted to sketch up something to to follow but if we just use standard uh, sculpt tools double click on the edge so I select the whole thing here um, we could start pulling in this straw here if you hold down the alt key while you're pulling then of course you're adding a new section and uh, you could start to kind of like pull uh in kind of like in this and try to make you know start creating somewhat of a band holding down alt every time you see i'm adding uh adding a new section here so you do kind of have that option you could play around with it. and i said this before that with uh, with sculpting it's all about how much time you're spending on this, right? Now I might move over to the front side here. Um, and then I maybe start kind of like doing the same thing you just have seen me do. So maybe I, I start twisting it a little bit this way, adding a new section to that, twist it this way. So this is kind of how you could use um, the sculpt. Is, space here to kind of create now it looks like we might want to work a little bit of this shape here um, but this would definitely be a way to kind of start creating should we say organic shapes now the trick in sculpt is that when we are done with this when we have when we have moved it around like this there is an option in here called thicken uh sitting right down here so we can add a thickness to it so we can select our body here and if we do, I don't know how big we're going to make it, we're going to make it 0.25 and we hit enter, then we actually now have a, um, a straw. This is now hollow. If I hit finish form, it will give us <laughs> a warning. See that? There's a warning right there. Um, actually, it's kind of hard to see. Um, if I hit there, you can see that it shows up in red that there's a warning and that's actually because there is some overlapping geometry there um, probably all I have to do is I will probably actually go back now I know where it is let me go control Z to get rid of the, the thickened surface there um, and I would go back right click edit double click on that face and it's probably just because um, it needs a little help maybe so let's just see if we can bulk that out a little bit. It might just be, it's getting that intersection there. Let's try that. It might not be. So this is something you would have to, to play with. And probably also why I would not 
be doing uh, it like this. But if that's what you want. There we go. Now it became a solid, right? Now we're back in the solid environment and you have a straw and you could, you could go crazy um, do this or anything. So there would be one way. Now, another way to think about this would be standard, um, a standard kind of modeling environment. So let me go in and uh, you could, for example, do something like a coil, use the coil. So if I click coil and uh, let's do another straw over here. Um, and we drew that six millimeters. Well, actually, this is going to be bigger. Uh, let's make it maybe a hundred, like that. So here is a coil. Now you can see this could be maybe considered, <laughs> um, you know, already having that that shape. And you have some different options in here. So if I go down here and we do six millimeters, so we kind of have it the same kind of diameter as before. You could start adding some angle to it here. So maybe we do, I don't know, 25 degrees, right? So now we start getting um, something that might be a crazy shape. And you could you could now extrude to this. So we could actually go over and say over a new sketch on this face here. Um, and we could now draw something. I think I did it on this face here. P for project. This. Let's do a um, Q, right? So we could we could keep on here, and then we could draw another arc. That could even be another another uh, coil on here, in some direction. Uh, but then the trick here is to use the shell command up here. So click shell, and then we'll just click on this face. And we'll click on the other face where we want the openings and then we can give it a thickness of whatever we want in this case 0.25 and uh, and now this thing is actually oops this is actually hollow too so that's a couple of different ways that you can create uh crazy straws huh i thought i would be uh never thought that i would be modeling crazy straws inside of fusion 360 but ryan yep two different ways you can use the sculpt Again, the sculpt might be a little bit of a, uh, you know, workaround because it is so organic where at least using something like the coil, you're probably getting a more, uh, more normal shape. You could also just using like a sweep command following to have a profile following a path if you just wanted to do something uh, more like flat and don't want it to go all, all crazy. Hope that was, hope that was useful. Um, next one is from, next one is from John. This is Cam. Hey Lars. Hey John. Um, I really enjoy your videos. I recently purchased a seat of Fusion to run my Morishiki. Oh, that's a cool mill. Um, still learning Fusion. Um, but I, so here's the question. I have a part that I'm currently doing that is round, sticking out of the main spindle, with a pocket going through perpendicular to the center line axis. I would like to use a 90 degree chamfer mill to break the edge. I could use a 3D chamfer, but that would not give me a uniform result. Uh, what I really want is to use the rotary axis to chamfer with. Um, I haven't seen video, so let's do that. So we're gonna actually do four axes. This is four axes. Um, mill turn or it also was maybe could be called live tooling let's take a look at this so new model here and let's just um go ahead and do c for circle and let's do a uh, 150 millimeter diameter and extrude this out that's the round bar and then john said that he has a pocket going through through the center line so we can draw up the center line if we want to something like that and we could do a pocket let's do a point to there and i don't know how big we want to make this pocket maybe we make it 50 by 50. Yeah. 
that's probably okay. I'm not gonna fully define it, but let's just uh, let's just blast that through here. Hold down left mouse button for a little, and you get this little menu here where you can select uh, profiles, and let's blast that through there. All right. So um, here is is this pocket we have going all the way through. Now there's a couple of things I'm not 100% sure about with this part, uh, but what I'm gonna show today is what I hopefully you will find as a cool little trick. Uh, see, so most likely you have some inside corner radiuses also in this pocket uh, going through. But if you just, I don't know if you do that, you could be doing something like a Singer EDM or something. Uh, but if you go in here and do a, um, a chamfer, uh, what is really what we wanted to do, we wanted to do a, a chamfer, we're using a 90 degree chamfer mill. If I go in here and select this edge, and this edge, and I give them, I don't know, five. Notice um, what is happening in here uh, when you get in close. You see how there's a little section in here where these two are really not playing too nice with one another. And, 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 and John, you're welcome to write me back. This is where we start talking about like, what is it really we want and what is the end result we want uh, in here? What I personally probably would go for if I was going to do that, because I'm going to be using a 90 degree um, chamfer mill to, to chamfer around here is this corner really just going to be a development probably um, almost regardless of what corner radius we have in here. Um, so what I would actually do, and this is I think is a good cam trick, I would actually delete this chamfer and not having it in my model. And I used to do that back when I was a Ritlam. I actually would many times just, I wouldn't have chamfers on my model. I knew as the programmer that there was gonna be chamfers there and, and even the drawing might calling it out. Here's the cool thing. If we go in to um, manufacturer and let's go in and select the setup and we're gonna go over here in the menu, we're gonna select the turning or mill turn or live tooling whatever you want to call it, um, and uh, it, it sets it up for, for turning here. But if we just go ahead here and uh, go in and select the standard 2D contour, and let's go ahead and select that 90 degree tool. So I'm going to go into metric, and uh, I don't know which one of these I have here. I have a, a 45 degree chain for mill. Let me just double click on that. Um, let me just go ahead and check it here. Edit. This is right out of the, the tutorial library, right? So you will actually see that is not sharp. So I probably want a no tip. So now it's a sharp one. And now if it was a if, so now I'm just going a little bit past John. If this was what I was gonna do, I would now save this to my library. But we're just gonna leave this one here. We're gonna use this one. Okay. Uh, next, I'm gonna go to the geometry tab, and inside of the geometry tab you will see that there is a wrap function. I checked that one, it's asking for a cylinder. I'm gonna select this top cylinder here, and then it's asking for a contour selection, and I'm just gonna select this selection right here. Now, remember when I'm talking, uh, and I've talked about before, about doing any kind of like, when things gets hard inside of CAM, select a few things and just hit okay, and see what you get. And what we actually see here is we are getting something that might look pretty close to what we want. Um, I'm actually gonna go into my setup again, go to my post-processing tab and uh, see how under stock, it has set the diameter, but it's fine, but it had rounded to the nearest. I don't know if any, so I'm gonna make the stock finished. Let's just process this. And let's simulate this. We can turn the stock on. And let's just see what we get when we are doing this. So this is definitely a, um, this is a four axis move, right? It's gonna do that right on your machine. Of course, your post has to, uh, to support this. So we can kind of see this here. This looks decent. Now, of course, I just picked that ad, so right now it's actually not removing anything. It's just right on that, right on that edge. That's not good enough. But did you know 
that inside of the 2D contour, if the 2D contour toolpath sees a chamfer mill, then if you go to the passes tab, you will actually see that there is a chamfer section that normally don't appear for a standard end mill. So now we could go over here and say, all right, let's try to make a one millimeter uh, chamfer width and maybe one and a half tip offset. I'm not sure if this is good, but I hit okay to see what I get. And that might look pretty good. Let's go back here and let's just simulate this. And now it looks like we actually get somewhere, right? Like we're getting a, um, a chamfer. Now, um, it's a little bit hard to see when I do this because I just get that raw stock. Um, but what I could do was I could go um, into my setup again. And instead of using this fixed stock, I could actually go and say from solid and just select this original stock we had here, let it reprocess, regenerate. And then now if I go into simulate, now you will actually see, we see that finished pocket, what is really what I want. Um, and let's try to slow it down a little bit. And now you will actually see that um, it looks better. Now, if you still are like, yeah, but now the solid kind of comes in the way. I still can't really see how it's going to look like. Uh, you could go into your model and just turn that off. Now you can actually see uh, the development better. You could also go in and change um, the material to, to something else in here. If you feel like this should be better, a little bit better to look at. So let's just run this backwards a little bit. So now if we go in and we look at this corner here, comes down. And what it does is it creates that development right there because it's literally just driving that square. And I think that, that that is most likely what most people I would think want is just to drive that and then bring that over there. And then whatever kind of like the corner is going to be is going to be a... Um, kind of like a development of that. That is definitely how um, I think that I would interpret that. John, um, you tell me um, if, this is, uh, if this is useful uh, to do kind of like those uh, chamfers. If you're just looking to apply a chamfer to a part, to a pocket like this, uh, most likely you just kind of like want that, that development happening there without too much, uh, too much action. So I hope this one was good. I felt like that this one is uh, one of those that showed you maybe a couple of tricks that you didn't know. That's the goal, at least. Thumbs up if you like this. Thumbs down if you don't. Um, just a quick little cam, chamfering, fourth axis tip there. Subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, hope you found that useful. All right. Um, let's jump through a couple of other ones here. <sighs> It's good stuff. Uh, next one here is from Dominic. And uh, Dominic sent me an email. He also sent me an image. I'll call the image up. Done with uh, with this cam one here. Um, he sent me this image. Three, two, one. Here we go. Right there. That is a pretty cool fusion model um hey Lars, i'm really enjoying your videos thank you so much dominic um i just i just didn't find if it's possible to do a walkthrough animation i'm drawing a 3d of my house that i'll build and i like to go through the model to see how it looks like from inside and then he sent me a link to a video um here um where and this is actually this is not Fusion. This is 3ds Max. Now, if you are not only a Fusion user, maybe you are, your company is what we call product design and manufacturing collection customer, meaning you also have Inventor, you have Fusion, you also have 3ds Max. So you could actually do it within 3ds Max. But what uh, this guy is doing, Bonnie Bucks, <laughs> whatever, um, is he draws a spline and then he follows um, kind of a, when he, he can walk through with that spline, 
um, within his house. Um, what is super, super cool. Now, the difference between Fusion and, uh, and 3DS Max is that Fusion is a mechanical CAD software where, um, where 3DS Max is more used for high renderings and animation, like in the movie industry and things like that. Now, um, in Fusion, though, um, remember how I, last week, I opened up my, uh, the week before, I opened up my, my garage here. Um, we do have an animation space. Now, this animation space, though, is not really meant for walkthroughs. Um, it's more meant for, like, exploded views and things like that. You can somehow get there um, if you go into the animation space, but I, I'm not that good at this. You probably have to be better than me. Uh, but what you can do, so you have this little timer down here, and if you bring it over, I thought this is a curtain, the red little thing. I thought it was a cupcake for the longest time. If you bring it over that, then it will not record anything when you're moving around. But if you set this to, let's say, two seconds, and I move this over here, see how it just recorded something. And if we hit play, it will actually kind of bring you from one space to the other. Um, so actually probably the best way to show this is if I go here, go to front, bring it over to two seconds, do a rotation like this. You get that recorded. We can do another two seconds. We can go like this, right? So you're kind of getting, you, you get the idea. And then when you're, when you're doing this, you can kind of see how we can we can play through the model. Now that might make you tempted to say, I'm gonna delete here. And I have done a video on this before. That might make you tempted to say, well, I'm gonna make a walk through two seconds, and then I'm just gonna scroll my mouse mouse wheel and get myself nicely into the garage here. And that will work okay. The problem with this is that you have a tendency and this is just because this is not really meant for this you know if i hold down and do a rotation with my shift middle mouse button here you can see how i'm kind of like ending up getting myself outside the garage and now i'm actually ending up having like the first section is good but then i kind of ended up out there what is maybe not what i wanted um so you can delete that again be back in there so it makes it a little hard. So now I'm going to talk about a 3D mouse um, to kind of make this movement. See, now I'm kind of outside again. Try to get through the wall. There we go. That's my staircase. And now I'm probably making a mess out of it. Right? So, so it's not the same as when you are watching uh, using a professional tool for that. So, so this, it's not really that great to do this kind of movement. Um, but if you're looking to just kind of like, if you're going to, you could maybe doing some section views of this, multiple recordings and then stitch it together again. But this is definitely best um, for like I did before, where I kind of like did a, a view cube kind of thing where, you know, you're trying to just maybe do a little bit more of a um, a presentation, you know, in, in this sense here. Maybe do a spin it around like that. And then when we play it through here, we get a little bit more of like a interesting look. Um, and then you can publish it out as a as a video. So just know you can you can do that. Um, save it out either as an AVI, either you can save it to the cloud or you can save it right to your computer. I'm not going to do that. Um, hope that was somewhat useful for you, Dominic. No, that was not quite the solution you were looking for, but, um, you know, this is kind of like one of those things using, I think using the right tool, you can do something maybe, um, that's probably the best you're going to get. All right. Uh, next one is from Ricardo. Hey Lars, I just received a VF4, so that's a Haas machine. I made a simple program in Fusion 360 
Um, and when I reached that block with a G41, it jumped an alarm 367. I returned to Fusion 360 and changed the type of compensation for where for in computer, and I tried and it worked. I think the problem is that the measure of the tool taken by the Renishaw does not match the nominal size of Fusion library. Is that right? Is that parameter to adjust to avoid the alarm? So this this um, this this email is probably about a week old or so. So you maybe have already found found your answer. I don't know exactly, but I have a suspicion um, for you, Ricardo. So on the house, just from past experience, when I used to run a house, like the controller you see in the back there, um, normally if you don't have a probe, then you'll use G351. But in your tool offset for where you will normally just leave it all at like zero, zero, zero. If you're using the Renishaw probe, however, then you need to put the tool diameter in there uh, for the probe to, to kind of get that. So I think that that's probably what you're missing. Hope that is useful. All right, uh, another one here. This one is from, this one is from uh, Charlie. Hey Lars, and he sent me an image, so let's get that up. This looks pretty cool. Got this cool gear here. Um, Charlie says, long time watcher, first time caller. <laughs> I have built I am building a geared extruder for custom 3D printer. I'm working on. I'm trying to figure out how to make the correct gearing for a planetary gear setup and animate it to make sure it works. I'm struggling to find anything out. So if you're if you're interested, I could use a hand. Here's the image on what I'm working on. And he also sent me the step file uh, for it. Oh, I never showed the image. Sorry. He's just looking at me reading. That's the image of the gear. Ah, sorry about that. All right. So we have this gear. This is a, a step file. Trying to make that gear ratio for that. Um, and uh, and going ahead and... Uh, and, and, and model it up. Now I can tell you, and then animate it. I can tell you that I would not, I would not animate it inside of Fusion 360. So let me just talk about what I would do. Other people, give your comments, thumbs up, thumbs down. This is what Lars would do. I would, first of all, go over here and I would get my machinery handbook. See, whenever it comes to uh, to gears, gears, to gears, um, don't try to model up a gear like as your own kind of standard. Get one of the gears that is inside of the machinery handbook. You can buy this one. I bought this one on eBay. Don't buy the latest edition because they're pretty expensive. Buy a used one on eBay. Um, if you use the gear data in there, you don't have to worry about if the gear is going to work or not work. They will work because you you use the, the, the right dimensions and everything. So that's my first thing I would do. The reason also that I wouldn't try to animate this inside of Fusion is because the only way you can really animate a gear is by using uh, the context sets uh, in there. So if you go in, um, let's get out of this. If you go into assemble, we have this um, we have this enable contact sets, um, and again because Fusion is a um, is a mechanical CAD software, it has to solve everything. So all those gears, your computer will literally just it will literally just die. Like they won't die, but your, your computer will stall. Uh, it cannot make all those calculations. Uh, in there, and why why can't it? Well, it doesn't have to because if you're using the gear data inside of uh, in, inside of Machinist Handbook, you don't have to worry about the gear ratio. That's kind of my that's kind of my point. So I wouldn't do that. All right. Anybody ready for some uh, for some three D printing? Maybe, hopefully, <laughs> here on a uh, on a on a Sunday. Next one here is from Ryan. Hello, Lars. Um, I watched some of your videos. I have a particular challenge and problem. One of my designs have completely gone missing. 
Oof, that's bad. Uh, but I have an STL file of it. And I've used an STL to iGIS converter. Okay. Um, and though it said it failed twice to upload, I actually succeeded. Huh. Well, you know, what do they know? Uh, <laughs> the issue with the pieces is there's over 100,000 triangles. 100,000 triangles. Now, it's all faces. And I need to figure out how to turn it back into a normal solid without 100,000 triangles. All right. This is for all my 3D printer friends. Um, and so I can make some adjustments that I need to make. I'm currently sitting in the patch asking to stitch it together as a file. Blah, 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 blah. So trying to get rid of these. All right. So what I thought we will do, because we have some fun here. Um, what I did, let me just open up a new file. What I did was I actually went out um, and I felt like we needed a new STL file for, for our live streams here. So if I go out and say insert mesh, um, I brought down from Tingiverse, so I like Tingiverse, dad STL file. All right, check this out. I'm going to show you a couple of different things with this. Um, so <laughs> this was just way too fun, way too cool. Now, this is fine. This is an STL file, right? So if we don't need to make any changes to this, and I'm kind of like, Ryan, I'm, I'm, I'm moving a little bit away from your, uh, from your question just for a second. Um, of course, you could just have printed that. You, you could have opened up your 3D print application to send to your printer be done. Uh, but if we wanted to convert this into a solid, um, we didn't have to. So, so what Brian did was he um, used an STL to IGES converter so he could so get it converted. We don't have to do that unless holding that accuracy of 100,000 triangles is important. See, and I've talked about this before, but let me just, let me just quickly say it again. Uh, SEL files is made up of triangles. You can see that here. Now, the the finer, the more triangles you have in, the more accurate the shape is. So see down here on the bottom, this is not a very accurate shape. There's some big triangles. In here, we have some small triangles. Um, and the, the smaller triangles, the more accurate the model is. The problem is that uh, a software like a mechanical CAD software like Fusion has a limit on how many triangles it can use. So for Fusion, for example, we're looking at a span of under 50,000 triangles. Um, and that's, you know, that's just how it is. Uh, now, again, you maybe don't need to do anything with this model, but specifically for, for Ryan, he wants to turn it into um, um, to a solid. So we're going to do that. So first thing I'm going to do, right click. And I'm going to say, no capture design. That's going to get rid of the history tree. But what that let me do, folks, is we can select this STL. We can right click and we can go and say mesh to B wrap. So that means mesh to a solid. We can click here and say, OK. Now we get a warning here that the facets on this model is 52,000 conversion has been aborted. So you don't have to do this, Brian, because you already got yours converted. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that in my under name, my name up here and under my preferences, I'm going to make sure my preview that my mess workspace is turned on so I can go into the mess tools and then I can actually click reduce. And now I can just highlight this whole thing. Um, and I can go to then the Z and I can bring the face count down. Now I'm going to, you know, it could be easy to say, well, let's bring it down to 50,000, but I'm actually going to bring mine further down just for the for the exercise here. One, two, three. So let's bring it down to 20,000 and preserve boundaries. And let's just hit OK and see what we get. Now, this might take a little bit of time. Uh, but in this case here, let's click on the space here and see if the model is going to move. Oh, I actually didn't select everything, did I? Why is it still pre-selected blue? How many do we have now? How is this whole thing? Right click, convert to B-Rep, new body. Okay, so now I only selected the, I don't know why I didn't select all of them. 
so now it says it can do it. Let me just go ahead and do that again. Last time, why? That looks right. Reduce face count. Let's bring it down to 20,000. There we go. Uh, now I brought it down to 20,000. So now you will see that this hand here is actually not more, is actually not accurate. And uh, now when I go now and try to turn this to a solid, I like the whole thing, right click and say master B-Wrap. Okay. See, now it sees that it is uh, at 20. It's not recommended, it's still a lot, but I'm just gonna hit okay and try to do it anyways. So now we just gotta wait a second as Fusion is, uh, is kind of doing its magic here. Um, there we go. Now, the thing you wanna do now, you see how it changed color. The thing you wanna do now is you wanna go over here and you wanna make sure that this become a solid. See, this didn't become a solid. This became a surface. That is very interesting, right? Um, and I think that the reason this is, is if we go in to the surface toolpath, we can try to highlight everything again. Just select the whole thing. Now, this is going to take some, some compute power. If I go in here and say stitch, do, 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 do. Because we want this to become a solid. Hang on, hang on. Let's think about it. There's 20,000 different triangles right now that Fusion is doing some calculations on. So this might just take a second. But what we will get out of this is that Fusion will actually show us that we have a gap in this model. That's why we ended up with that 20 um th that 20,000 surfaces because it couldn't make it watertight you'll see over here on the edge that it actually shows us some different areas if you're looking at the model here where there's some issues so it looks like where are these gaps so in here you see how it kind of highlights an area in there. So there's something going on right in that area in there where it hasn't uh, healed it up. And this can really be, uh, this can be a, <laughs> a pain in the neck. It's not Fusion's fault. It's because this solid model uh, in the conversion process, um, it just couldn't make it, uh, couldn't make it watertight. Now, um, you can either try to repair all this so go in and try to use some patch tools and things like that. But I'm not going to do that in this video. I just wanted to show you if this happens to you, you know why. What I'm going to do instead to get to John's problem is that I am going to delete that surface body we just created. I'm just going to get rid of that. So just uh, hit delete there and I'm going to turn our mess back on. I'm going to do something else just to have some fun. Um, I'm going to go back into the mess tool space and I'm going to do a... Uh, plane cuts and I'm going to select our mess body and then here for my plane selection I'm going to select this plane here and now I'm going to just remove all this like this and, and I could choose to say fill but I'm going to choose not fill because that's going to kind of show you that problem we had before uh, where it was just a bunch of surfaces. Oops, I didn't want to cut off the hand or the finger. Let's go back in and do that again. My mistake. Cuts. Let's bring it back again. Uh, let's bring it up in an angle a little bit. Like that. Okay. I didn't want to get rid of the hand. Can I select this, maybe? Delete, okay. Um, so what I wanna show you is actually what is happening on what happened before, just the, with those service models. See, if I go in now and I say, all right, um, let's convert this over to a solid. And then I get to your, uh, to your thing here. 
Uh, oh, we gotta be on the saw, sell it, right click. Now I just got the model a little bit smaller, but this is gonna be easier. The reason that it couldn't become a solid boot before was because that there was a gap, right? There was a tiny little gap. Now, th now there's a big gap, but this is my point. Um, so what you could do is you could try to go in with a surfacing tool and try to repair all this. Now I'm trying to do this a little fast. So I'm just gonna select the pads. I'm just gonna select that outer boundary that's going to put a patch on it. And now if I go in and do what I tried to do before, highlight the whole thing, stitch it. And if you don't have any holes, if you don't have any gaps, um, what is the case now, what I just did, then when you hit, you see there's no gaps in here. Now when I hit OK, then you will see that it's going to turn this in. It's going to take these two surface bodies now. It's going to turn it into a body. That's really what we want. And that's where, where Ryan is. Now, I did all this work, Ryan, just to get to the point of showing you uh, a couple of tricks to do this. So first of all, know that if, you, if those 100,000 facets you have are like big facets, like on this flat plateau here, you can actually select that area, hit the lead on your keyboard, and Fusion is going to try. Whoops. You might have to go back in and turn your feature tree on. Fusion is going to try to heal this. Nope, it does turn it back into a solid or to a surface body. Huh. That is interesting. There you go. So you can't be in this. I was under the surface tool. About it. Then it just deletes it. You got to be under solid. So notice what's happening here. I'm selecting a face and I hit delete on my keyboard. Fusion is actually trying to heal up this face. It's actually removing these triangles. It's actually pretty crazy. Now, this will take some time to do. Uh, I couldn't do that one. Let's try to go ahead and select this face, hit delete. So you will actually see that I've been moving those top faces and making um, making them more normal. And you could probably go, we could actually probably go around here. And if we did this long enough, um, we should be able to end up with a... Uh, with a unified surface. So that is, um, is, is one way to do this. Now, what another way to do, like the hand, you can't do this on um, because on the hand here, this is, uh, you know, it, it can't solve, I don't think it can solve that up. Like if I select this and hit delete, it, it will not keep it, here it just keeps it flat that's why we can do it but this is actually a a curved surface what you would have to do here would take a lot more work ryan um and this is just the nature because you're coming from an stl file we don't have better data what you could do was you could go into the sculpt environment i'm just going to create uh kind of like a sheet here like this and i might just add some more segments in here like this. Um, and if I go in here, right click edit form and just select all this. And this is definitely not a solution you're gonna be super excited about maybe, but what we would have to do is we would have to rebuild all this up. Um, let me make it a little smaller. You'd have to build all this up as a um, as a sculpt, and I wouldn't even probably be up for this job. But what there is a function in here that will let you do under modify will let you do a pull function, and that would actually pull these points to each closest intersection, right? And in this way here, you would actually be able to pull. 
um, all of these points. You could have window selected these points. But to get my point here, you could start like creating a sculpt over our our SCL file that is just tri triangles. This is a little bit like what I've said before when I'm using this terminology. There are many times I say garbage in, garbage out. Um, you know, like we don't have better data than this STL file. So therefore, um, this is what you're gonna get, right? Um, this of course will take some time to kind of like pull all these points um, to, to that solid model. So that is, a, that is one thing uh, you could do. Now, what I'm gonna do to this model, just because, you know, if you watch this this long here and you haven't turned me off yet, I feel like I owe you this. I'm gonna delete, I'm gonna finish this. So you can kind of see how it will lay that sheet. And I made other videos about that. Now, what I would probably do between you and I, at this point for anybody who watched this as a 3D printing, I would create an offset plane from the bottom here. Let's go in and look at it from side. I'm gonna drag this up like this. And then I'm gonna do a split body. I'm gonna split this body, our hand body, with that plane I just created. Through there. And then I have two bodies, body one, body two. I'm gonna right click and remove body two. I'm gonna do a sketch on that bottom face there. I'm gonna say C for circle. I'm gonna draw circle out like that. Q for press pull. And I am going to give this something like that there. And that is now a solid body. Um, we could start doing some engraving on it, but uh, yeah, so that will be another thing we could do. Maybe you can replace some of the stuff with, cut some of the stuff away and replace it with new solids. And then it's maybe only certain areas like here where you, uh, where you have to, uh, to, uh, to do that. All right, I'm gonna finish uh, this part here. Um, I am gonna put a, um, I'm gonna put a chamfer on this edge and this edge. Right there, let's make it five, let's make it two, like that. And go to tools, go to make, 3D print. I'm gonna select this model here. Now does this one, friends, does this one need support material in here? This is always my, my question. Will this need support material? I don't know, like somebody said to me, anything that is 45 degrees, um, less than 45 degrees. But I don't know about over on the side, inside of the hand here, is that gonna collapse? Maybe. Doesn't that also has to do with uh, with how many layers you do. I'm gonna to try to do this one. Somebody told me that two is better. And uh, if we are doing no support material, will this hand fail? Somebody tell me out there. Somebody's gonna leave me a comment. Five hours to do this. Somebody, I should probably do a test cut. I'm just gonna hit print. Anyways, and with that, that thing should stop running. Uh, Ryan, so yeah, not a perfect solution maybe um, to your hundred thousands, um, but you really have, you can't just remove them like with a magic button because your STL file is the data you gave it that is just those hundred thousand facets. So you really just, you really, you got to kind of like re-manipulate it. So either if it's flat, I would probably cut some stuff away, try to delete those faces if it's flat, or you're going to have to go into uh, the sculpt environment. I hope this was useful to someone. <laughs> Maybe not. Thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if you don't. Comments. I love to get them even if you think, even if, if you think this was silly. Uh, 
and any advice you have love to uh, to get that to with that 3d printing all right let's move on uh next one here this one is a good one whoops this one is a good one next one is from sac now this one this one is complex i think it's complex uh desperately need some help on this complex for me challenge well I don't blame you, Zach, because I think it is a little challenge too. Now, um, let's switch over here. That is now 3D printing. Uh, we don't need the, the piece hand here. I'll open up the next one. So, Zach sent me an image. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> this is kind of cute. Uh, there you go. That's, that's, that's awesome. You know, this is why I, I'm the same way, Zach. Uh, this is why I am using CAD and not drawing by hand. <laughs> so what we have is we have a cylinder, a cylinder. We have a Z channel in there that is kind of following a path, uh, an oblong path in here. But here's the tricky thing about this from Zach's perspective. And that is that this end here is thinner or thicker than the other half. Uh, this here is going to take a little bit of modeling up and, and I hope that this is useful for you. Now, again, if there's some of you guys out there, when you see this video, if you have a better way to do this, that would actually work, then, um, then I will definitely love, uh, if you shoot me an email, uh, but this is definitely not easy to do. You have a couple of different options, but because, uh, to your point that, that this is, is different thickness in here. In red, you're probably looking at using the loft command. And um, I would say that even if you're brand new, you should still watch this video, just so you can see some of these tools that you maybe have never seen before. Yeah, let's just jump into it. Let's get into Fusion, man. Let's start modeling uh, this part up here. So what I'm gonna start doing is I'm gonna start with a cylinder. So I'm gonna open up a sketch, see for circle, and um, let's make it 200 in diameter and O for offset to uh, to do this here. And let's make it 10 millimeters thick. This doesn't really matter. I'm gonna extrude this up up through here. Let's make it 300 millimeters high. So here is our two, right? So again, if we're just looking quickly on Ryan's sketch, so on the inside. Of this tube, we want this oblong channel uh, of kind of like a, um, I don't know what you call this, uh, C gripper or something like that. Like, so it's going to snap into something. Okay. Um, let me just close something else down here. Okay. Now, what I would actually probably do right here is I am going to cut this tube in half and remove half of it. You can always mirror it back in the end. Um, and I'm going to show you just in a second why I'm going to do that because I am going to select this and I'm going to split it with the plane here. Okay. And then I'm going to remove one of these bodies. And the reason I'm going to do that is the next thing I'm going to do. I'm going to make that oval. So I'm going to open up a sketch and uh, open up this sketch here. And uh, then I'm going to draw up an oval. And uh, this is going to be an ellipse. And I'm just going to draw an ellipse up here. Draw something that looks like that, maybe. And let's just fully define this. Normally, I don't like to fully define things on these, uh, these ones. But this is a little bit complex. So I want to make sure that we get this about right. So let's make this 75. And maybe make this um, 120. It doesn't really matter. And I'm also going to go ahead and make this 150. Now, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to make an offset of this oval and bring that out. And I'm going to make that 10 millimeters. What we, so what we have now is we kind of have this oval sitting here. Now, and this is what was the reason that I am going to, um, that I'm going to do this um, I cut this pipe in half. It's because I'm actually going to project this shape 
over on this face. But because I'm gonna do a, a loft um, on here between these, I actually don't want this to be continuously all the way around because it would actually it would actually screw things up. What this um, what this oval is gonna be is it's gonna be our rails for our shape, and I would actually probably only do a fourth of it. So what I'm gonna do is still inside of that oval shape. I am going to create a line, and I'm gonna close a line from here from this endpoint here to this endpoint, and from this area here to here. And then I'm going to trim uh, this. This is a command I'm not using very often. I'm actually gonna trim half of this oval away. So we're just ending up with some of this. Now I just killed my fully defined, and you can read that mentioning it again. I'm gonna not go for that. Here comes the first tool that I don't know if we have used ever on uh, on these ass glass lines. Uh, we're gonna open up a sketch on this front face. Doesn't really matter. We're gonna go in and we're gonna do a project to surface command. So we're gonna select that face we wanted. So this is why we had to cut the pipe in half. We're gonna select the curves. That's gonna be these two curves here um now it's hard to see because everything is blue those two curves right there and then instead of saying to closest point i'm actually going to control along a vector so i want to bring it along this axis right here and now you see that that appears in there i'm going to hit okay and now that that um oblong section there has now been projected over to there okay now we can turn sketches off and we don't need them anymore but we do need this one here now these two um curves are going to be lofted rails so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to start sketching um on on two planes so i'm going to start out with i'm going to finish the sketch this sketch is done here and it can actually be an, a good trick is to right click these and I'm going to just rename this to be called rails and the reason I'm doing that is now when you hover over and you see it says rails down there versus just sketch two. just make it a little bit easier to find things I'm going to create a uh, offset plane that is on the midpoint so that's 150 up that will be right where those points are and uh, I'm going to open up a sketch on that here and I'm going to rotate it around up here and uh, I'm going to draw a, uh, a center rectangle and this is maybe not the best way to do this but I'm going to do it this way anyways um, and I'm going to make sure that this is passing through those points and I'm actually also going to make sure that it's crossing into our solid that's important so i'm actually going to hit d for dimension and i'm going to make a point from here to here and make sure that this is overlapping um and then i'm going to make sure that i want to dimension from here to here and i want to make sure this is let's make that 10 millimeters now what i'm going to make is now is the c channel that we have so i'm going to do that c channel that um that Zach wants through here. And then I'm actually gonna draw up kind of that C channel up like this. I'm only gonna do half of it. This is hopefully one of those that you're gonna learn from. So I'm just, not right now, I'm just coming up with some, some numbers here, 3.5. I had to practice this one before we did this one. And I'm gonna make sure this one is 10. So remember, remember this 10 millimeter, because that was what one of the things that, uh, that Zach pointed out that there was going to be a different thickness. Now I'm going to just take, and I'm going to use the mirror command, and I'm going to mirror these edges over this line so I didn't have to draw it all up. Okay, that's my first, that's my first profile. 
My next profile, so that's sitting up there on top. My next profile is going to be another sketch. And it's going to be on this plane. Now I'm going to use this slice command over here. Just so we're slicing through here. I'm going to do the kind of the same thing you just told me to do. I'm going to draw a rectangle. I'm going to make sure that it intersects with our guide rail. And I'm also going to make sure that there's a dimension here. So I'm making sure that it's oversecting. Then I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to make this one sticking out 10 millimeters. And I'm now going to do what I did before by driving a center line like that. And uh, I'm going to draw up half of it again. Now what I'm going to do different on this one is I'm going to make this one 8 instead of 10. Okay, so that's the difference. Now I'm going to make the rest of them the same. 1.5. This one was 2. And this one here was 3.5. And then I'm going to do what you saw me do before. I'm just going to mirror this entities over this one. Okay. So what we have now, finish the sketch. So what we have now is we're going to do a loft on this one to this one. But then we're going to use these as the guiding rails. And that is really to hold this solid in place. I don't Now, if you wanted, you, you might need to then also do this. Then you could do one on the other side that, you know, could be... A different maybe this one next one is six right and and then it could kind of like go around um, I hope that makes sense but I'm gonna go in now and do a loft and I'm gonna select this and this is one I'm gonna select this whoops I don't mind. make sure I select the right profile Oh, why is... Hang on. There's something over that profile. That profile is not right. That sketch. Why would that not be a closed profile? Look at this. Isn't that typical? See how I messed up this year? I didn't close that. This is the things that makes... That was a sketching error on my part. All right. Loft. This section, that's the 10 millimeter. Two, this section here, zoom in. That's the eight millimeters. Now I'm gonna, it comes out as a cut. I'm gonna make it a join. Now notice what it does right here is it just does a straight loft from that shape to that shape, boom. This is where we come in with the guide rails. Um, and we really need the guide rails on both sides to do this. Uh, that's extremely important. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna pull it with one guide rail, like here, one guide rail on the outside now that might you might think oh that looks good but if you're zooming in here you can see that it's not following the other guide rail uh that shape so we're gonna have to select that one also and then the shape goes ahead there and, and get that in there hit okay and now we have uh that shape uh in there now I this makes sense that we did it in half sections like this. We could now, um, so this was 10. We could now make one over here where we use guide rails again, uh, and we could do that. It could also be, and I don't know what you're, what you're kind of looking for here, um, Zach, but you could also, of course, we could just go, go now and do a mirror 
of features. And if we did this right, we should be able to mirror all this over like this. And make sure you check up here to see that it's still one body. That means that it's a, a fully body. And now we actually have a development that's going to go right now from 10 to 8, from 8 to 10, from 10 to 8, and 8 to 10, right? That is kind of what is kind of cool. Oh, and then I would start adding my fillets now in the end. But know that, um, know that, uh, that that would, will, will, take some time to, to calculate. Um, that is, is, is one way to do, this is how I would do that. And then of course, um, you know, this last shape, if it's, you probably don't want it to be, uh, so we could say mirror, yeah, you can mirror this feature. So I'm gonna select that over there. Okay. And then we could, Combine these two, join them together, okay, and then you kind of have that um, that cylinder there with that shape. That's how I would do it. Uh, this was a, I think, was a pretty complex one. I would love to know how you would do this. Found this helpful? Thumbs up. If you thought this was stupid, thumbs down. And again, if you have a better way to do this. Um, you know, one way could probably maybe try to build it out of surfaces would maybe be, a, this is the best way I could come up with. Hope you found this useful. All right, let's jump to the next one. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, I would really appreciate that. Next one, uh, Lars, I'm a YouTube subscriber of yours and I've been watching and learning Fusion 360 from you and finally downloaded the program yesterday. Awesome. Um, Here's my question. This is from John, by the way. I have just purchased a Shaper Origin. I'm assuming that's a, 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 a um, I'm assuming that that is a, uh, a router. Um, can you direct me to the basic lessons that will most be most relevant in a woodworking application? I'm going to be doing inlays, making two dimensional paths, cutting out patterns and so on. Um, I actually don't know, um, John, if, if I have anything, um, so what I have is if you go and you search on YouTube and you search woodworking, maybe wood Lars, I don't know what the heck coming up then. Uh, I have done something on some wood carving uh, down here. I made some wood cabinets uh, in here. I've done some small wood wooden boxes. Uh, I did actually a layout for cam, how you can lay out multiple sheets. Um, I have done a few uh, like that. Now, if you go to my channel, anyways, let's go to the channel here. Um, if you go to the playlist, um, you will see that I have my Make Anything playlist. And if we click on the Make Anything playlist here, you will see that I do have a Make Anything sign. I've done that using uh the router i made some saw push sticks um that's probably the best that's probably the best that i got uh for that i haven't uh, most people who follow the channel know that i'm, I'm not a great woodworker <laughs> to begin with um and the step craft is kind of like i wish i had more time to play with it um so i have some videos on that but i wouldn't say that i'm perfect on that there is other things though if you go in and just in general uh, say Fusion 360 Cam, you will find a ton of different ones. Uh, there's this one here. My good friend John Saunders was hanging out with him earlier this week. Uh, you know, just go and watch some of the basic Cam uh, videos, and you should be uh, you should be you should be all rolling uh, with that. That's what the best we can do with that. All right, next one is from James. By the way, hope you find this useful. Uh, thank you for all your guiding help. Uh, I have a one inch cube, so we are back in inches. I want to put a taped pole, five by 16 by 18, 
on three sides but go all the way through. If I use the whole command, it will work out, uh, but I only get image of frets. If I do the same by extruding three holes, then using the model frets, then I get, uh, and he gets an error. Let's try this. James, let's try this. And then I'm gonna show you uh, a, a solution to that. Maybe if we get the error. So I'm gonna go over here and switch over to to metric because that, or to uh, inches because that was what James said. So he had a cube of one inch by one inch. We can do that. One by one. Press pull, one inch. Okay, there is his cube. Now, so what, um, what James is saying is that he gets an error when he tries to extrude free holes and then use the model thread uh, for it to work. And, and when I saw this, James, I was thinking, well, it's probably just because your model threads are, uh, you know, it's too hard for the computer to calculate the model threads. But you actually don't, when you're using the whole command, so that's what you use. If you click on the whole command and we select the face here, um, let's look at that face. So we can do a reference. So let's do a reference from the top. Let's make that 0.5. Select another reference here, 0.5. So now the hole is right in the center. Oops, I shouldn't have hit enter. Edit. Um, this is going to be all the way through. All the way through. Uh, this is a fretted hole, right? And um, this was going to be five, what was it? Five sixteenth, eighteen. So that is like 31, 25, 5, 16, 18. Okay. So here, if you do it like this, um, on this, Make sure that you check the model down at the bottom. Now it's modeled. Okay, so now what, what James is saying is that when he does the same thing, now he didn't have it modeled, but if we go ahead and we do the on the side here, look at that. Let's do 0. 0.5, 0. 0.5, 0. 0.5, 0. 0.5, next etch, 0.5, Hit enter again, sorry. Um, all the way through, it's gonna be another threaded there. And the size is, what is it, 31, 05, 16. Now if I click modeled, is it gonna fail on us? All the way through. doing nothing. Selected a reference. I did something wrong. Size. Size is wrong. 31. Huh. What did I do, folks? One selected. One inch selected. One selected. All the way through. Oh, this is good. I don't like to be a quitter, but let me just exit out of that again. Edit. Thread. Modeled. Okay. I'm going to have it all the way through. That's good. So now it's modeled all the way through. It's on the center. I think that's what we want. Switching sides on me. That's what happens. Switching sides, it fails. That's weird. Delete that. Let's try that again. Whole face etch 0.5. Point five. 
all the way through. Threat. That's what we want. There we go. I don't know what I did with the other one. Let's try to throw one through the top. I don't know what happened. I went out of it and went back in again. Hole. Select the top. Select an edge. 0.5. Select another edge. 0.5. So go all the way through. And then model that's the right size. Hit OK. Calculate. And there you go. So if you use that whole command, you can definitely do it. As you can see that I'm doing here. Now it's a mess. This is where I thought actually it would fail, James. Because you see how the calculations, they, and this is how it would look in real life too. Like it, it looks horrendous in there uh, in the section. view. But yeah, you can absolutely do that. Uh, just do everything from the whole command. It didn't used to be like this. So maybe this is where uh, James, you know, if you're like, wait a minute, I didn't know that. It didn't used to have the fret inside of the hole. Now you do. Okay. If you like this, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. Leave your comments. If you haven't subscribed, I would love that. Just trying to add a little bit more value uh, to your day here. All right. Uh, we are about now on 20 minutes. Let's see if we can do wrap up this a little bit. Uh, hey, Lars. Thank you for everything you taught me about Fusion. You're so welcome. This is from, this is from Ben. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm just missing it somehow or if even an option, but if it's an option, I would like to know how to export <clears throat> the tool library or at least print it so I can keep track of things better. That's a good question. Uh, inside of CAM, if we, uh, let's open up a new file. Let's go to manufacture. Um, you have the, the tool uh, libraries. Let's go into one here, for example, uh, that I've created. Uh, you can um, you can actually uh, export the tool library. If you right click on it, you can export it. But if you're exporting it, it's becoming a dot tool library. So for Fusion, what is good if you need to bring it to another computer or something. If you want to print it, uh, like you said, uh, to keep better track of things, um, the only thing you can really do, let me actually go and take something else. Like let me take the metric library. The only thing that I'm aware of you can do right now is you can click on the top, shift, click on the bottom, get them all, do a control C and then open up Excel. So an Excel spreadsheet. Here we go. A blank Excel spreadsheet and do a control D. Then, maybe not. Oh, hang on. That's not what I wanted. File new. Okay, let's try this again. Select them all, copy. Paste, there we go. I must have done something wrong with the first one. Uh, now you get it in here as a um, as an Excel file where you will see that you have all the columns, uh, you have all kinds of information in here, um, you know, what all the breakdowns are, dimensions and, and things like that. So that's that's one way to, uh, to get it in there. You even have like the tool holders and, and things like that. That's the only way that I am aware of, we can we can bring it in. Hope that was useful for you, Ben. All right, let's do one more. Uh, last one is from Summit. Uh, hey, Lars, hope you're doing well. I'm doing awesome, man. Um, this is from Summit in India. I'm a big fan of yours, and I learned Fusion 360 seeing your videos. Uh, two questions. How to get access to Mac MasterCard hardware Whenever I select any hardware, it brings me back on the login page, but my auditor's email or password isn't working. Uh, could you please help? So I actually looked out on uh, on the forum to see, let's not save this, to see if I could find a good answer for you. 
Uh, and one suggestion that was, was to actually go in, um, if you click on the question mark up here, um, I think, Oh yeah, if you go to the question mark up here, go to support and diagnostic, you could try to clear your cast data and see if that, <clears throat> if that will help. But so what happens is uh, for, for, for Sumit is that when he goes and say insert and he say McMaster car, it, you don't get this, it asks you to lock it in. Um, now, that's what I would try. If that doesn't work, you might have to try to reach out to McMaster. I don't think it's a fusion problem. Um, so that's one thing. Now, the other thing that, um, whoops, I had a picture on this, was that some had sent this file, this model, and says, all right, my second question is, below is a pre charts pneumatic airgun valve, and I don't see it in McMaster. Uh, of course, it's not well-known valve. So this could be a valve from like a website that is not a McMaster. Um, is there any way to be making it without making each part separately and assembling it? And I think this is a really good one to talk about because, um, yes, so we're looking at this image here and, uh, you know, a pretty cool valve. Uh, but if you're using this for a reference, in another model, you maybe don't want this to be all so detailed, right? Um, and do you have to model all the different components up? Uh, then you don't have to. Now, if you want it detailed, you can. But if you don't want to, how would I go about that? And I would definitely not do it as an assembly. What I would do is I would actually go up and say canvas, and let's start on this side plane here. And I would open up that file of that pneumatic valve you have there. And hit OK. And uh, if you look at it, <clears throat> you will actually see that there's dimensions on it. So if we go over to the tree over here and we right click on it, we can calibrate it. And now we can just take one of these dimensions. So for example, 56. And make it 56. Now it's going to get big. Boom. Now it's actually to size. Next thing I probably would do is turn my origin on and place that origin somewhere on this model. So right click and hit edit canvas and drag, oops, and drag, um, what the heck? Right click, edit canvas, and drag this somewhere I want, where I want my origin. So maybe I, I say I'm going to put it right on that side valve right there. And if you were just asking me to, to model this up for an assembly as somewhat reference, what I would do now is literally just let's draw a rectangle and let's make it whatever the thickness is, 30 by 56, right? And now we go ahead here and say, I am going to make a, a um, relationship with this edge to this edge. And then I'm just going to drag it down here to about there, default dimension. So if this is a reference for an assembly where you don't really need all the details, don't do all the details. Um, just, just model it close here. Right, like that may be close enough right there. Uh, maybe I hit alpha line, I draw this out here. And then you could actually just draw like the profile. Again, I'm just, maybe I need this in assembly. I don't really need all the details of this model. Um, you know, it's just a reference model. We could do that. We could also do the same thing over here. We drew another line going down here over and up D for dimension this one's going to be 30 this here is going to be 18 divided by 2 and let's just draw that last line up there
Now again, this one actually has um, 34. This one actually has some O-rings in it, but maybe I just don't want to bring those details in. So with all these sketches now, I could go ahead and say, that's it, all these sketches. And now I'm gonna go ahead and say extrude. And I'll start with the box here, the center box. And I'm gonna turn on symmetry and I have no idea how thick this box is. Let's just throw it out like that. Um, and if I hide my canvas for a second and turn my sketch back on, you can kind of see all the stuff we drew up. So now we could go and say revolve this one around this line there's that that's the one with the with the o-ring right click repeat revolve this one around this right click repeat and this one around the center line of this now you might let me just turn the sketches off again now if you're looking again we turn the, the canvas on Right, we, we get something that looks somewhat good. Now you could decide that, well, uh, you know, I, I, I want a little bit more detail. So you could go in and say, let's add uh, the thread to this face, 18. You could choose to just make it being a resemblance of a picture because you don't want to make this file too heavy. Or you might feel like, well, you know, I have, I want them modeled. So now they look more real, right? Um, we could start, you know, doing all different kinds of things. You could uh, hit, uh, let's do a couple of fillets on the side here, maybe, just to make it a little bit more looking a little better. Um, I might go in, hit A on my keyboard and find a paint. Maybe it's a powder coat. Download that, drag that on there. Now I knew that this year, actually if we're looking at the canvas again, um, let me just open up the photo itself. Uh, on the photo, you will see that it's, on the photo here, it's black, and but that is silver. So we could go back in here, change this to faces, and then we could just drag you know, kind of that appearance back on there and all those faces. So it looks, you know, this is depending on <clears throat> how detailed you want to uh, to make this. I even went into photo, I took that image that you just saw and I just cut out a rectangle of that dial. You could bring that in as a decal. If you go here and say insert and say decal and we select this face and we go and select that little dot we can move that around, drag that over there, right? Like now that is maybe, this dial is maybe what makes everybody in the company kind of looking at this and I could have made it, I just cut a rectangle. Uh, but maybe this is what makes everybody kind of like understanding, understand what this is when they see that that dial there, you could, you could cut it out, you could do, you could do whatever. But this without, Without the, if I turn, if I turn the model thread off, this is definitely the lightest. We can kind of make this. Um, I would probably maybe just, you know, the, the model thread maybe makes it look <laughs> a little cooler. Um, so if you have, you know, we had the dimensions, we follow the dimensions on this on this part, and and if we had to stuff this into an assembly. This might be enough to reference a this this pneumatic valve. Um, if we wanted to make it super detailed, then you could go in and do that, right? You can keep on building on that. We could put the O rings in and things like this. But this is a solid body, one body, uh, resembling a whole a whole bar, a, a whole model of a lot of components but it might be good enough for that. So I hope that was what you have to submit. Um, I hope this was somewhat useful. This, if you like this, thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. <laughs> Leave me a comment. Um, this, this, it was uh, last live number 14. We're about an hour and a half. I think that's, I think that's about all I got in here. I'm gonna do what I normally do. I'm gonna chop these off, find the best ones. So um, 
you know, hopefully you found this useful. And uh, until the next time, I hope you have an awesome, awesome day. Take care, folks.